Imagine serving in a royal court comfortable and respected only to learn your homeland is in ruins. This was the reality for Nehemiah, a man who held a position of prestige as a cupbearer to King Artaxerxes and of Persia. He was not a tradesman nor a merchant, but a trusted confidant within the royal court. His life was far removed from the labor and toil of construction, yet destiny had a different plan in store for him. One day, a report reached Nehemiah about the desolate state of Jerusalem, his homeland. The city walls, once a mighty symbol of strength and security, lay in ruins. Jerusalem, the heart of Nehemiah's heritage, was a shadow of its former self. This news was more than just an update about a distant city. It was a call to action, a stirring of purpose within Nehemiah's heart. It was as if the broken stones of Jerusalem's walls were crying out to him, pleading for restoration. And Nehemiah, despite his comfortable position in the royal court, could not ignore this call. He could have dismissed the news, could have carried on with his life in the court, untouched by the ruins of a distant city, but that was not Nehemiah's way. His heart ached for Jerusalem, for the city of his ancestors. He felt the weight of his homeland's despair and it kindled a fire within him, a fire that would not be quenched until the walls of Jerusalem stood tall once more. The news of Jerusalem's devastation ignited a transformation within Nehemiah. It was a spark that lit the flame of leadership, turning a comfortable courtier into a visionary, a man who would not rest until his vision of a restored Jerusalem was realized, a man who was willing to leave the familiarity of the royal court, to step into the unknown, to take on the monumental task of rebuilding the walls of a city. This devastation ignited a fire within Nehemiah, sparking a transformation from a comfortable courtier to a passionate leader. This was Nehemiah's call to action, a call that would lead him on a journey of leadership, of faith, and of relentless determination, a journey that would forever change the course of Jerusalem's history. What happens when a devastating reality collides with a powerful vision? This is the question that Nehemiah faced when he learned of the desolate state of Jerusalem. A city once vibrant and secure now lay in ruins, but rather than succumbing to despair, Nehemiah did something remarkable. He allowed this harsh reality to ignite a spark within him, a spark that birthed a vision of hope and restoration. Imagine Nehemiah, a man accustomed to the opulence of the Persian court, picturing the crumbled walls of Jerusalem standing tall once again. He saw beyond the rubble and ruin, beyond the present circumstances. He saw a city restored to its former glory, its walls a symbol of strength and security. This wasn't a fleeting daydream. This was a vision, a mental image of what could be, driven by the desire to make it so. This vision became the fuel for Nehemiah's determination. He was no longer a mere cupbearer to the king. He was a man on a mission, a man with a purpose. He was ready to leave the comfort of the court, to face the challenges that lay ahead, all because of a vision he held in his mind's eye. But the power of Nehemiah's vision extended beyond his own determination. It became an inspirational force, a rallying cry that stirred the hearts of others. It wasn't just Nehemiah's vision anymore, it became the vision of the people. They saw what Nehemiah saw. They believed what Nehemiah believed. They were inspired to join him, to work alongside him, to turn this vision into reality. In the world of entrepreneurship, the power of vision cannot be underestimated. It is the spark that ignites action, the catalyst that transforms ideas into reality. It is the force that drives us forward, even when faced with insurmountable challenges. So let us take a leaf from Nehemiah's book. Let us dare to envision, to dream of what can be, and let that vision guide our actions. For it is vision that can turn the tide, vision that can rebuild walls, vision that can transform a city. This vision became Nehemiah's guiding light, a beacon of hope amidst a landscape of despair. With a vision in place, Nehemiah understood the importance of resources. He knew that dreams, however grand, cannot materialize without the right tools and support. This is a fundamental principle in entrepreneurship. To bring an idea to life, one must secure the resources necessary for its realization. Nehemiah, despite being miles away from Jerusalem, was not deterred. He recognized an opportunity in his position as the king's cupbearer and strategically leveraged it. He presented his plan to King Artaxerxes, not as a mere whim, but as a well-thought-out project. He didn't just ask for permission to go, he asked for the king's endorsement and support. This was a bold move, but it was also a strategic one. 
By securing the king's backing, he was able to access the essential materials needed for the rebuilding process. This is a powerful demonstration of resource mobilization. Nehemiah didn't have the resources himself, but he knew where to get them and how to secure them. This is a crucial skill in entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurs may not always have what they need at their disposal, but they must know where to find them and how to acquire them. They must be able to convince others to invest in their vision, just as Nehemiah did with King Artaxerxes. Furthermore, Nehemiah's ability to secure a leave of absence from his duties as cupbearer shows his negotiation skills. He managed to convince the king to allow him to undertake this massive project without neglecting his duties. This is another essential skill in entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurs must often juggle multiple responsibilities and negotiate their way through various challenges. In the end, Nehemiah's strategic resource mobilization laid the foundation for his ambitious project. He managed to turn his vision into a viable plan, and this was only possible because he had the resources to back it up. This lesson from Nehemiah's story is a timeless reminder of the importance of resources in any entrepreneurial endeavor. Arriving in Jerusalem, Nehemiah was ready to turn his vision into reality, but he knew he couldn't achieve this monumental task alone. The walls of Jerusalem weren't going to rebuild themselves overnight. It was a massive project requiring a collective effort. So, what did Nehemiah do? He did what any effective leader would do, he turned to his team. Nehemiah understood the power of teamwork. He recognized that the strength of a team lies in its diversity, a collection of individuals each with their unique skills and perspectives. He saw in the people of Jerusalem not just a crowd, but a team brimming with untapped potential. With a keen eye for detail, Nehemiah assessed the situation. He surveyed the city, studying the extent of the damage and understanding the scope of the work ahead. This wasn't a haphazard venture. It was a carefully orchestrated plan designed to maximize efficiency and ensure success. But meticulous planning was just the beginning. Nehemiah then delegated tasks among the different districts of the city. He didn't assign tasks randomly. No, he matched the tasks to the skills and strengths of the people. This was strategic delegation at its finest, ensuring that each person was in a role where they could contribute effectively. Each district had a role to play, a section of the wall to rebuild. The people were no longer mere spectators to the city's ruin. They were now active participants in its restoration. They were a team working together towards a common goal. Nehemiah's approach is a masterclass in leadership. He didn't just manage a team, he empowered them. He didn't just delegate tasks, he fostered ownership. He didn't just lead, he served. He understood that the success of the project was directly tied to the unity and collaboration of the team. This delegation of tasks reveals Nehemiah's understanding of team dynamics and the power of collaboration. It's a testament to the old adage, together we can achieve more. And that, my friends, is the power of teamwork. Rebuilding a city wall is no small feat. It requires more than just resources and a plan. It requires a leader who can inspire, motivate, and rally the people to work towards a common goal. Nehemiah was this leader. From the moment he set foot in Jerusalem, Nehemiah was more than just a planner or a delegator. He was a motivator. He understood that rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem was about more than bricks and mortar. It was about restoring a sense of pride, security, and identity to the people of Jerusalem. Nehemiah, with his vision and determination, became a symbol of hope for the people. He knew that to bring about change, he had to inspire others to believe in the possibility of that change. But Nehemiah didn't just inspire with words. He led by example. He didn't stand on the sidelines, watching as the people toiled. No, Nehemiah rolled up his sleeves and worked alongside the people. He shared in their struggles, their triumphs, and their hopes. He showed them that he was not above them, but one of them. This act of solidarity strengthened the bond between Nehemiah and the people of Jerusalem. Nehemiah also understood the power of positive reinforcement. He celebrated the small victories, encouraging the people to take pride in their progress. He reminded them of their shared goal, a restored Jerusalem, and how each brick, each stone, brought them one step closer to that goal. Nehemiah's approach to leadership was not about command and control. It was about inspiring, motivating, and leading by example. He showed the people that they were not just building a wall, 
but rebuilding their city, their home, and their future. Through his actions, Nehemiah embodied the spirit of an entrepreneurial leader, proving that leadership is not about the position one holds, but the actions one takes. Nehemiah wasn't just a leader, he was a beacon of hope and determination. The journey was fraught with challenges, but Nehemiah was prepared. Just as calm seas do not make skilled sailors, smooth paths rarely produce resilient leaders. Nehemiah's journey was no exception. The path to rebuilding Jerusalem was littered with obstacles, both from external threats and internal conflicts. Nehemiah faced opposition from multiple fronts. Sambalat, Tobiah, and Geshem regional leaders were not thrilled at the prospect of a fortified Jerusalem. They mocked, threatened, and conspired against Nehemiah and his team. But Nehemiah was no stranger to adversity. He was a strategist, not a mere dreamer. He set up guards, armed his workers, and organized a defense system. He didn't let fear paralyze him. Instead, he used it to fuel his determination and ingenuity. But the challenges weren't just external. Internal conflicts threatened the unity of the team. The poorer citizens of Jerusalem were being exploited by their wealthier counterparts, leading to division and resentment. Nehemiah could have ignored the issue, focusing solely on the physical construction of the walls, but he understood that a house divided cannot stand. He addressed the issue head on, rebuking the oppressors and advocating for justice. His actions restored harmony among the people and kept the project on track. Maintaining morale was another crucial aspect of Nehemiah's leadership. In the face of adversity, it's easy for spirits to dwindle and motivation to wane. But Nehemiah was not just a leader. He was a motivator. He reminded the people of their purpose, of the vision they were working towards. His words served as a beacon of hope, reigniting their determination and bolstering their courage. Nehemiah's ability to navigate challenges kept the project moving forward, demonstrating his resilience and tenacity. His story isn't just about rebuilding walls, it's about resilience in the face of adversity, about standing firm when the winds of opposition blow. It's about weathering the storms and coming out stronger on the other side. It's a lesson in crisis management, in perseverance, and in the power of unyielding commitment to a vision. Nehemiah's story transcends the walls of Jerusalem. It offers timeless lessons for aspiring entrepreneurs. His journey paints the portrait of a leader who, despite lacking a conventional business background, embodied the very essence of entrepreneurial leadership. His tale is not merely an account of bricks and mortar, it's a masterclass in vision, resourcefulness, teamwork, motivation, and crisis management. Let's dive a bit deeper into these lessons. First and foremost, Nehemiah's journey underscores the power of vision. His dream of a restored Jerusalem ignited a spark that set his path in motion. The ability to envision a future different from the present is a potent tool in the entrepreneur's arsenal. It fuels determination, inspires action, and serves as a beacon in the face of adversity. As an entrepreneur, your vision is your compass, guiding your steps and lighting your way. Next, we see the importance of resourcefulness. Nehemiah leveraged his position at the Persian court to secure the resources necessary for his mission. He didn't allow his physical distance from Jerusalem to hinder his plans. Instead, he used it to his advantage proving that resourcefulness is as much about mindset as it is about material resources. An entrepreneur must be adept at identifying and utilizing resources, even those that might not seem obvious at first glance. Then there's teamwork. Nehemiah didn't undertake the monumental task of rebuilding Jerusalem's walls alone. He understood the power of collective effort and harnessed it effectively. He divided the work among the city's districts, ensuring everyone had a role to play. This is a testament to the power of collaboration and the importance of delegation. As an entrepreneur, building a strong team and distributing tasks effectively is crucial for success. Motivation, too, is a key takeaway from Nehemiah's journey. He didn't just lead from the sidelines, he rolled up his sleeves and worked alongside his people. He inspired them with his words and his actions, keeping spirits high and the momentum going. An entrepreneur must be more than a boss, they must be a source of inspiration and motivation for their team. Finally, Nehemiah's story teaches us about crisis management. He faced numerous challenges from external threats to internal conflicts. Yet he navigated these storms with remarkable skill, devising strategies to overcome obstacles, maintaining morale, and addressing conflicts with fairness and diplomacy. 
as an entrepreneur, you're bound to encounter storms. How you weather them could make all the difference. Nehemiah's journey serves as a powerful case study in entrepreneurial leadership, demonstrating how an unlikely leader can ignite change and leave a lasting legacy. His story reminds us that entrepreneurship is not defined by a business title or a particular set of skills, but by a spirit of resilience, innovation, and unwavering determination. Thank you for watching Glorious Tube Channel. Please subscribe, comment, like, share, and press the notification button.